Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Hey there, welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop video competition for you. Today we're gonna to be looking at TRSF 2019. It's a Jack and Jill Advanced Finals, which means it is going to be a massive battle, and I can't wait to get into it. Let's do it! And here we go. I've been waiting for this one. And it better be good. Oh, we got a jam, jam circle style battle. These bring about so much energy. Oh, we're in Italy. No, are we in Italy? It looks like it. I don't know. I know some of these dancers. So this, this is going to be interesting because I know some of these dancers, but... Uh, Let's see what happens. Alessandro De Caro. Pari de Valdifiori. Francesco Porrini. Francesco. I was like, okay, there's no leads. <laughs> they chickened out. Simone <laughs> Tancredi. All right, let's see if I see any more familiar faces. Actually, you know what? The familiar face I thought it was was the judge or the teacher, Gas. I know him. And he doesn't look like he's competing. It looks like he's trying to organize everybody. But it looks like everybody in these lines are about to pick their part. I like this guy's hat. I, li I like that. He's got some guts to... Wear a hat like that without it flying off, you know. Let's see what goes down, folks. Okay. Are we ready? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I love when they ask, judges, are you ready? And I'm always just like. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I don't have to wear my judge face in these videos because I'm at home so I can actually like enjoy it too and not look as like serious and pretentious alright here we go looks like it's the warm up You never know what advance means, folks, because advance in some places is really, really good, and advance in other places is not at all good. So let's break it down and see what goes on with this. So I pay attention a lot to this tempo. I'm looking first to see who has control. I want to see people just harnessing their chi, just relaxing. And so far, the guy and the gal. Uh, let's see, where does my eyes naturally flock? Okay, my eyes right now are going to the gentleman with the, the hat and the lady with the white dress. And the reason is, is because they're not moving too much. So now I'm gonna, in my mind, I'm going, okay, they're good, check. Now I'm looking for some other people. Okay, this gentleman uh, who's very musical here in the middle. He's got a kind of a grayish suit and his partner, she's got like purple on. They did a little behind the back move that kind of stood out a little bit. Lets me know that they're gonna be a little bit more playful. So I'm gonna be watching him to see if he does too much. Because the playful ones, it's really, really hard to do just enough uh, so it doesn't undermine the whole process with their partner. So let's see what happens. Can't judge too early, but those are the two two couples I'm looking at. All right. Now watch me be totally surprised. Here we go.
Ah, nice move, nice move. All right, second couple. See, like I said, I knew he's gonna have a lot of energy. He's coming out playing. This couple coming out. This is a good warm up. I'm seeing what they look like. Uh. Yes, yes. She read that well. Wow. Some good solid Charleston, okay. This is round two. This is the this is the deciding round, folks. So my eyes are razor sharp right now. Excitement! Look at that! Look at that! Yes! Solid! Ah! Way to play with it! That's good! That's good! Swing out! Just knock over the judges. I love it. <laughs> Just violence. Wow, this was a pretty impressive advanced level. I'll tell you that for sure. Like I mentioned before that I've traveled so many places in the last 10 years, over 200 different trips overseas, and advanced is a very relative term. Invitational is probably the most relative term. That's a controversy. I won't even go there. But advanced is one too. And every person that I see do an advanced one, I have to put on a new filter and go, okay, what am I comparing them to? What's the actual level that I'm actually comparing them to? And so, when I look at this particular competition as a whole with the body of uh, dancers that they're working with, I have to collectively judge them on a level to say, okay, this is, this is an advance that gives me a certain context, and therefore, I have to immediately go into my three categories. Right. If I see some problems overall with most of them, I have to immediately go to my three categories. And those categories are control, timing, and creativity. First place always has those three. Judges will have different ways of saying this stuff. Many people uh, in the audience understand this uh, instinctively, but we don't say it the same way. So what I like to say is I put it in, again, control, timing and creativity. Now let's break these down. When I talk about control, this is a word for me that says technique. 
But again, there's so many different techniques in Lindy Hop. How do we know what's the right technique for what they're trying to accomplish? So I don't like that word technique. I say control because their intentions are to do their own style and manipulate the technique their own personal way. So I have to examine if they are in control of what they're intending to do. And so when I look at this, control for me means can I see the leader initiate something to the follower and the leader not get in the way? And can I see the follower not get in the way of the leader? So we can clearly see that there are two bodies functioning as one body, sharing energy at different points. So we can see that something is happening because there's a cause and that there's an effect. And that relationship continues to, to vacillate back and forth and it's a beautiful thing, it's wonderful. So I look for that and I have to be super critical upon my first viewing. Especially when the tempo's slow, it tells me everything, more so when it's, than when it's fast. And so, like I mentioned when it was slow, the people who stood out to me the most, again, showed me everything about them when it went fast. But here's the surprise person. Let me give you my third place person. The surprise couple for me was uh, the lady, she had an orange dress on. He had like a light, light, light bluish shirt with maybe an orange tie, black uh, pants and no hair on the top. I don't know if that's voluntary or not. <laughs> so, but for me, they were third place because the number one thing that they did have, they didn't have the other two for me to give them anything higher, but they had control. They did not rush. I didn't see him being louder than his partner. I didn't see her being louder than him in a way where it looks like the leader did not give that initiation, right? Of course, the followers can embellish it however they want, but sometimes you can clearly see when the follower is just moving themselves while their hands are connected to something else, like a leader, right? And this couple, they did a great job. Even the second set, they took their time in Charleston, they did it a couple of times, and they went back to swing outs and continued to go. Now, some of the moves might look clunky, but really, what's clunky? What if they intended to make it look a little clunky? What if that's their style? Right, So I don't judge them too harshly on if their shapes um, presumably look a certain way that I uh, appeal to, like the things that I enjoy the most. I don't judge them too harshly on that. That's like diagnosing or, or analyzing if I like their swing out um, or if their swing out is good based upon a style that I prefer. So I can say I didn't like some of the shapes the way they did it, but I can tell you they had control. So I respect the control they had. So in my book, they got third place. Don't know their names, but I like them for third place. They were great. The second place person has to have uh, something more than just control. They got to have control, but they've got to have an additional element that says it's worthy of second place. And again, that's the timing aspect that um, not everybody has. I wouldn't say every couple did timing well, and I have to elaborate on what exactly what I mean by that word timing because it can mean different things, right? Uh, if I'm speaking about timing for a competition, I'm not talking about the basic swing metronome that is the swing note. That's what everyone is dancing to. What I'm alluding to is the phrasing of the music. Typically in a competition like this, they will have either a blues structure or just a basic swing structure where you have four eight counts. I'm talking dance terms, not music terms. And generally on that fourth eight count, the music is transitioning to start another phrase. And so if dancers are aware of hearing that and they can do something different on that fourth eight count, it allows me to appreciate what I'm hearing and make a visual connection at the same time. And some dancers are aware of this um, it isn't necessarily something that I say uh, constitutes good dancing, but what I will say is that it helps whoever's watching you appreciate what you're dancing to. And in a competition setting, I value that. Timing is huge because it is, I'm not just watching someone dancing to no music, right? They are actually working in tandem with the music. The call and response is from the music to the dancer, the call and response is from the lead to the follow, and the call and response is from both of those to the audience, right? So the couple for me that had second place, and the reason I got them second place is because they were missing an ingredient that I mentioned that could have possibly been a deterrent 
and getting first place. And the second place person for me was the gentleman with the tan suit and the lovely lady with the purple. She had purple on, nice little tan, a skirt. They were phenomenal. I loved their dancing. I loved their energy together. Um, they were doing a lot of traditional swing dancing moves that you would expect people to do in this competition, but they had a certain uh, just energy behind those movements that made him look, made me want to watch them more. It was more appealing and it actually synchronized better to the music because the cymbals were really loud and some of the horn section was loud when they were dancing. The reason that I didn't give them first is because the leader was a little too loud. The, what I mean by loud is that every time the leader would give a signal to the follower, he would distract my eyes. So I couldn't just see the signal and see where it goes. I would see a signal, whoop, distraction, go back and look at the signal. Signal, whoop, distraction, right? So I couldn't see that the leader was actually serving the follower. I saw the leader serve the follower a little bit and then st start doing more things by themselves. Now, I don't mind the leader doing a lot of different things, but in my opinion, it takes away from the process of what the leader is really supposed to be doing first, which is providing energy for the follower to move somewhere, right? And so the idea is if there's an audience watching you, you want them to see what your intention was, right? We want to see what happened with the initial move, right? And so a lot of that has to do with the leader just initiating and then just being real quiet, right? And it's extremely hard to do. I will tell you that. It's extremely hard to do because in a way, Lady Hop is not so much about what you can do. Because the technique is simple, it's not easy, it's simple, but it's really more about what you're choosing not to do at the right time. It's, it's, it's all about the, having the power and exercising restraint. The higher you go in the levels, that's really what it's more about. Properly placed ideas and restraint and discipline, right? And so that's who I gave for second place. Um, it is what it is. First place for me. It's a couple that I expected just from their slow uh, movement. That was my initial observation. It was the gentleman in the, the hat with black suit and his follower that he was dancing with. She had like a beautiful white dress on, nice little pattern on it. But they worked well together because the very thing I just explained about the second place people, they weren't doing. They had control. They had some great timing to you know to highlight certain parts in the music. They didn't do it a whole lot, but what they did do uh, merited my attention be simply because they had a tremendous amount of control so I can actually see the ideas more clearly. This was the most beautiful part about their dancing. The leader's moves was really was his swagger and his ability to not move in the right spot. And then I could pay attention to the follower. I could see what she was doing with her swivels. I could see the turns and the hand moving out. All of that I could appreciate even more so because of the reluctance of the leader to actually give too much um, after giving a little. And you don't, you have to have that balance. So they were phenomenal. They were the ones that I said, yep, yep, first place. I could see it. And I was hoping in the second round that they would maintain that same amount of discipline. So hands, uh, hands high for that couple. They were phenomenal. Everybody did a great job. I tell you that for certain. It's not easy to, <laughs> to get in a, in a group in the middle of a stage where lights are down and whatever you do is permanently on the internet forever, right? And you don't know if you're going to make a mistake or not. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to get out there. So I salute any of you who decide to get out there and do a Jack and Jill. Because I remember my first Jack and Jill. I was scared to death, but I was a dancer already coming into Lindy Hop. So I was able, I was a, I was a bit inoculated from the uh, complete trepidation of like stage fright and getting up there and, and being intimidated by just everything. People looking at you, their opinion. I was a dancer already. So that part was gone, the fear. I was just trying all kind of things. I didn't know what the limits were. You know, I was in a jam circle one time. I'm just like flipping with my partner's arm. I did like a roundhouse kick to her face. <laughs> She's just like blood everywhere. She's like, I'm fine, Jamie. 
she wasn't bleeding, but it was pretty much like that because I was like an up and coming teacher. She was totally fine with me like drop kicking her. Oh, I still remember it. It was so embarrassing. So anyway, I say all of that to encourage you guys, if you're not competing, get out there and start doing some competitions. It will really inspire you to get outside of your comfort zone and you will find pieces of you that were a little bit more timid, becoming more courageous. And that's what this is really all about. I say Lindy Hop is a personal development program with dance attached to it, <laughs> right? You start learning a little bit more dancing, you kind of change your friends a little bit, you kind of want to start rock climbing and learning different techniques and things, you start reading more, and it really is about developing yourself and, and developing the relationships that you have with other people in creative ways. That's what I love about it. So let me know what you guys thought about this competition in the comments section. I don't know anybody's name, so I don't really know who won. Uh, let me see if they have anything in the section here, description. I don't know anybody. These are just names to me. So there were some other judges at this event. I don't care what they think. This is my opinion, right? Uh, I want to tell you what I think, and I want to hear what you think. So let me know uh, if any of these people are any of the people that I picked. And uh, I look forward to hearing your opinion. If you guys are wanting to get more tips on how to just social dance in a way where you can fix yourself and no longer have to stress over like what is the technique and what is preference? What's objective and what's subjective so I can just move on with my life and start getting into the creative elements of Lindy Hop so that we can all benefit from that. Craftsmanship, the technique keeps us in the dance. It helps other people learn how to do it, but that's not the main thing. That's a piece of the main thing. That's the beginning, right? That's when you just first come in and you master that and you figure it out. But let's not inflate the very thing that's needed so that it works with everyone's style. We want you to have your own fingerprint. We want your fingerprint to touch the world in a way for generations to come to be inspired by your movement. So if you want some inspiration, I encourage you to check out my community online. I got a home studio here. I'm in the studio all the time creating new stuff just to share it with you guys, to give you ideas to spark more ingenuity for yourself to get out there and start creating. So if you like that, check out about 20 plus of my, it's like 20, 25 of my free courses below to really inspire you. Or check out my fundamentals membership if you want to uh, master Lindy Hop quickly and not take years to do it. So with that said, guys, love to hear your comments in the comment section. And if I don't see you uh, in the comment section, I will see you in one of my swing dancing courses online. Congratulations to all the dancers who danced at TRSF 2019. And I will see you all in the next reaction video. Take care.